This video is designed to help with short and long multiplication for year six. So welcome to this video on short and long multiplication. Short and long multiplication. Well, short multiplication, I'm pretty sure everyone in the world, by the time they get to year six, can probably do this. But let's come up with an example. 156 multiplied by three. Now, if you notice, I've got all the numbers in the right place value columns. The units, the tens, and the hundreds. Because I'm writing it as times three, this is a unit, it stays in the units column. Now, how might they have tried to trick you in maths? Well, they may have done 156 times three and written it all in one long line. Well, that is just a trick. And remember, the best way is to look at things like this. How do we do this? Well, this is where we tend to differ because the way I was taught things is a little bit different from the way Australia seems to do things. But let's see if we can give it a go. Firstly, let's get rid of this arrow and see where we go. Now, I was always told to start here at the units and work this way along my number. So what do I mean by that? Well, I am normally told to do 3 times 6, which is 18. Now, I put the 8 here and strangely, we were taught to draw a line underneath and a little one underneath the tens column. Now, I think in Australia, you're taught to put the one here. Interesting. Now, to me, that would then make that look like the number 15. So I'll do it both ways. I'll do it my way and then I'll do it the Australian way. So then we do 3 times 5 is 15. And I add the one down here to give me 16. So there's my 6 and there is my 1. And 3 times 1 is 3, add the 1 is 4, so 468. How do you guys do it? Well, if I remember rightly, 156 times 3, put the line under, right. 3 times 6 is 18, and I believe you put the 8 there, and you cut the 1 there. And then you do 3 times 5 is 15, add the 1 is 16, and you put the 1 up there. And 3 times 1 is 3, add the 1 is 4 there. So you get the same answer. Um, I personally find the putting the ones up here a little bit confusing, uh, more so later on. So we'll do one more example. Um, what about um, 812 multiplied by 7? Yep, 812 multiplied by 7. Mm. So remember, we start with the 7. And I work my way along this way with my top number. So 7 times 2 is 14. I'm going to still put my little 1 down here. 7 times 1 is 7 plus the 1 is 8. And 7 times 8 is 56. I don't need to carry anything. I can just write it on the bottom. Ooh. If you guys were going to do it your way, hopefully you would have got the same answer. 812 times 7. There is my line. So, 7 times 2 is 14. You put the 4 there and put the 1 up there. 7 times 1 is 7, plus the 1 is 8. And 7 times 8 is still 56. And so, we get the same answer. Awesome! Amazing! Little happy face. Thank you very much. Lovely, 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 lovely. Same principle tends to happen with long multiplication. This time, rather than having just a unit, we have a tens and a units. So let's look at an example. 44 times 12. Now, same thing tends to happen. We were always taught, or I was always taught, to start with the 2 and then work our way along the top. So almost ignoring the 1, we do 2 times 4, which is 8 and 2 times 4, which is also 8. Now, this is nice. We didn't have to carry anything. All right? Now, having done the 2, we still have to work our way this way, but the bottom now becomes a 1. And when I was at school, we were taught to put a circle around the 1 and make sure that we were going to start here, All right? Because we are now in our tens column. We're effectively doing 1 times 4 and 1 times 4. But sometimes we write the answer in the wrong place. So 
by putting an arrow above the column I'm going to work in, I know I've got to put my answer here. But is there another way? Well, yes. What you do is you put a zero in here to help remember. And now we go back to carrying on with what we were doing. So we do 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 4 is 4. And I'm pretty sure you're all happy knowing we add those two together, and so we get 8 plus 0 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 12. Again, I put my little one down here, and 4 plus 1 is 5, so my answer is 528. But why? What is the long way around doing this? Well, funnily enough, you already know how to do this. You've been using it previously in a different video. Let's just go back to the question, 44 times 12. Now, by doing the two first, what you're actually doing is you're doing 44 times 2, which is the 88. By then doing the 1, what you're really doing is 44 times 10. And what is 44 times 10? Well, we should all be able to do that in our head. But look, why the 2 and the 10? 2 and 10? Well, we know that 12 can be split up into 10 plus 2. So there we go. What we're really doing is we're doing the 44 times the 10, which is this 10 here, and we're doing 44 times 2, which is this 2 here. And when you add those two together, what do you get? Yep, you get 528. So you already know, actually, using mental methods, how to do this. You could probably already do this in your head, using the practice we've done before, but Let's come up with another example. What about 55 times 33? Well, if we think about this over here, what we're actually going to be working out is 55 times 30 and 55 times 3. Why? Well, if we think about it, we've got 30 and 3. 30 plus 3 is 33. So we're just splitting it up. But let's do it the right way. So we'll deal with our three first. And remember, we always work this way along the bottom and the top. So three times five is 15. Now, I've got a carry. When I was at school, I was still taught to put it down here as a little one. And three times five is 15, plus the one is 16. And there's my little one. Ah, but I don't need to put it there because I've got nothing to carry. And we were then taught to rub out our carries from this line. And then to go and say, well, this time we're doing, we're doing this three. So what does that mean? It means I'm going to write my answer in this column here. So I put a zero there. And we start again. Three times five is 15. There's my 15 with my little carry at one. And three times five is 15 plus the one is 16. We know that when we've done that, we add them together, and 5 plus 0 is 5. 6 plus 5 is 11. I'm going to put my little carry down there. 6 plus 1 plus 1 is 8, and my 1 carries down. So we now know the answer to that is 1815, or 1815. Could we have done this in our head? Well, maybe 55 times 3. What does that equal to? 55 plus 55 is 110. That is 165. Do I agree? Yes, I do, because there's my 165. And what is 55 times 30? That's exactly the same as 55 times 3 times 10. Well, we already know what 55 times 3 is. We've worked it here. It's 165. Multiply that by 10, and what do I get? 1650. Ooh, add them together and I get 1815. This stuff is awesome. What about one more example? 156 times 43. Well, we work this way along the bottom and the top. So we start with the 3. The 3 times 6 is 18. There's my 8, and I'm going to put my little carry down here. 3 times 5 is 15, plus the 1 is 16 with my little carry. 3 times 1 is 3, plus the 1 is 4. And we were taught to rub out our little carries. 
We're now going to start with a 4, so I'm going to do a little line there and a 0 there to remind me. So we do 4 times 6 is 24, so the 4 goes there and I'm going to carry my 2. 4 times 5 is 20, plus the 2 is 22. And 4 times 1 plus the 2 is 6. Line, add them together. 8 plus 0 is 8. 6 plus 4 is 0, carry a 1. 4 plus 2 plus 1 gives me 7, and 6 goes down. And so hopefully we are happy in now saying that that is equal to 6,708. Okay, so now you should be able to have all the tools you need to be able to work this out. But remember, if not, 43 is the same as 40 plus 3. So you could work it out as 156 times 3 added to 156 times 40. Yep, and if you remember, I can rewrite this as 156 times 4 times 10. All right, so lots of ways of doing this, be it in our head or even on a bit of paper. All right, but just remember that zero there and all other zeros are really important. Let's spend a short time just looking at division. All right, what if I wanted to do 824 divided by 5. Well, first thing we do is we I was always taught to write the number 824 inside a bus stop. It seems a bit weird, but that's what I tended to call it. And put the 5 outside. So this can be rewritten as 5 bus stop 824. Now I think I'm just going to write it a bit bigger so that we can work out how to solve this problem in a moment. Oh, my bus doesn't quite add up together. Now, this is again how we used to do it. We used to say, right, how many fives can I go into eight? Well, five goes into there one whole number of times, right? So it's got one whole number of times. And one times five is five. I wanted eight, so I had a remainder of three. And if you remember, we used to write, or we have to write, the remainder 3 here. And then we say, how many 5s are in 32? Because we now think of this number as 32. Why? Because the 3 remainders carried over. Well, 5s into 30 go 6 times. So 6 times 5 is 30. What is my remainder? 2. I've got 2 left over. And how many fives are in 24? Well, yep, there are four. And how many left over? Yep, well, you're probably going remainder four. Well, that certainly is one way of doing it and a very primary way, all right? In junior school, we love writing remainder fours. But actually, there's another way of doing it. And when you get to secondary school, you don't write remainder four. Why? What do we do? Well, let me show you. Let's write the question again. 824 divided by 5. This is what we do, exactly the same style until we get to the end. Because what I'm going to think about is what comes after the 4. Well, 5 into 8 do go once. 1 times 5 is 5. There is 3 left over. 5 into 32 goes 6 times remainder 2, and 5 into 24 go 4 times, remainder 4. Now what do I do with this remainder 4? Well, if you remember, we found out that a whole number can have a decimal point and a zero put at the end of it without changing the size of the whole number. And actually, that's what we do. We extend our division sign, we put a decimal point here, and we carry our 4. So the 4, so instead of writing remainder 4, which we're not going to do, we put the 4 after the decimal point and the 0. So now I have 5 into 40, I know that goes 8 times, with no remainder. Yay! I know that 824 divided by 5 is equal to 164.8. Wow! Now, what does that 0.8 mean? What does 0.8? What does 0.8 mean? Well, firstly, it means 0.8. What does that mean? Well, hopefully you're remembering 
that that is the same as 8 tenths because this column here is my tenths column. And how can I write 0 0.8 as tenths? It is 8 tenths. Mm, interesting. Let's just do one more example. Um, ooh, let's do 99 divided by 5. So there is my 99, there is my sign, and there is my 5. Now you'll notice I don't put the decimal point in the 0 afterwards until I need it. So how many 5's go into 9? 1 remained a 4. So let's put my little 4 here. How many 5's go into 49? 9 remained a 4. Now again, I could put remained a 4, I could put remained a 4, but I'm not. I'm going to do a decimal point and a 0, and I'm going to put the 4 here. Making sure I write the decimal point up here as well. 5's into 40 go 8, and so there we go. I have no more remainder, so I now know the answer is 19.8. You could have written that as 19 remainder 4, but again, remember, in secondary school or year 7, you won't be using remainders anymore. So, unless a question asks you otherwise, it might be a nice idea to start thinking of decimals. Again, what does 0 0.8 stand for? It's the same as 8 tenths. I wonder what 0 0.08 stands for then? Well, I think you already know this, all right? Because this is in my hundredths column. All right, so if it's in my hundredth column and I've got eight of them, how can I write that? Well, that's the same as eight over a hundred because that is my eight hundredths. One more, 0 0.006, change the number. What is this column called? It's my thousandths column, thousandths. So that is the same as saying six thousandths, all right? Wow. Pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. Anyway, that's the end of this video. You now should have all the tools needed to complete the work booklet you've been given. Have a good day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.